Banana. 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 <laughs> I give you a banana. A what? 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 A
give people a sense that there are other people there, you know, they're directly connected with them. The thing that people really like about this game is they get to complain a lot. They get to complain about how heavy everybody else is when they're rolling down on top of them. And then they get the chance to be the one that's so heavy. In 1973, Stuart Brand decided to stage a large-scale New Games tournament in the San Francisco area. He teamed up with a woman interested in bringing people together, Pat Farrington. 6,000 people came to play games of soft war and thrust during the three weekends of the first New Games tournament. In learning how to play freely in an environment that encouraged creative play, they were learning how to live freely. In 1974, Pat Farrington and a small group of people created the New Games Foundation. We wanted to share the tools we had discovered in playing together. Since then, we've shared new games with people all over the United States and across the Atlantic to Europe and the Pacific to Australia and New Zealand. Soft war, trust, and creative play. New Games is an idea that works. I was expecting something that's really new. So it was all ready. And I found out that there's some games I know, like this game of the bra, the scissor, and the paper. We're going to do a, a game now called Rock, Paper, Scissors Tag. Everyone remember Rock, Paper, Scissors? Both teams are going to line up, and uh, at the count, uh, everyone is going to say rock, paper, scissors, and then throw out one of the symbols. Are we ready? Ready? Are you ready? We are ready. Ready? We are ready. Rock, paper, scissors, rock. gets tagged before they get to the goal line is captured onto the winning team. As you can see, there's a moment of truth in the center there where you have to decide whether in fact you're going to chase or run. And uh, some people will throw the wrong symbols and run the wrong way and that's for the game. We were rock and you were scissors. Doesn't matter. A lot of people ask us about the name New Games. Uh, some of the games are very old. Some of them really have been uh, invented recently. The more games we play, the more we realize that there are just a few basic elements, a few ways that you can play, and combining them, there are infinite variations. What's really new about the games is the way you play them. The reason that it's, that it's easier for people to play new games is because they might be strange. Uh, they might not have played them since they were children, or they might not have played them at all. And uh, because of that, none of us have any expectations. If we were uh, to have gone out this morning and said, well, we're going to play touch football, we all have expectations. We, uh, we can turn on the television set any weekend and see a lot of people who are very good at that. And so we uh, immediately start out measuring ourselves against an ideal. You can't turn on the TV and, and watch people play Catch the Dragon's Tail. <laughs> is a dragon that's going to uh, try and peck his tail. And the point is for the head of the line to try and tag the person at the end of the line. Okay, when the tail gets caught, the tail becomes the new head. What's the next logical step for a dragon that's caught its own tail? That's right. These other dragons are coming after you now. <laughs> when we played Catch the Dragon's Tail or Rock, Paper, Scissors, we were certainly trying to win, but we didn't really care about the score. And so really what our focus was, was the process of enjoying and playing the game. The thing about creative play is something where you bring people together in an environment and provide them with materials or some understandings to begin with. They can then take and create what they want to out of it. And that's what New Games is about, taking game forms and sharing them with people and inviting them 
to do something with that, to adapt them, to change them, to create what they want out of it. A couple of us are going to go around and whisper in your ear, duck or cow, and then everyone start making the noise of that animal and find the others who are making the same sound and just join together with them into a big cluster. Okay, close your eyes. Cow. Duck. Cow. Duck. Keep your eyes closed. Everybody that's a duck over on this side, everybody has a cow on this side. Yeah, what's your eye? New game. I am now ready. Oh, look at you! I just said that. Good way to, to find out what you really feel about your husband. Oh. Enough? Enough. I really enjoyed playing with the boppers against my husband. Sure. It's the only time in my life I think I stood an evil chance. <laughs> my daughter and I were doing it too. She got some chance to give maybe some aggression or something out on me, you know, and me too on her. Boff. <laughs> boff, boff. New game. We wanted lots of people to experience new games, and we wanted people to play them in their own communities. We want to share a new consciousness about recreation. And that's what happens at a new game's training. You set a mood by the way you play. That's what we call refereeing. An important part of new games is the idea that referees, and these are the people who will essentially facilitate that activity, set the tone. We'll play hard, and we'll play fair, and we'll play so that no one gets hurt. The referee, if need be, will bring people back to that focus. But it's the people playing that keep the focus on the energy of their own joy. In terms of building a referee team, the most important thing is to play together. If you can play together, you can referee together. The term that she used, playing referee, is very important because you play in the game and you play wherever you're needed or wherever you would like to play. You're refereeing the game in terms of getting it announced, getting it started, being sure people know what it's about, keeping the game going. Uh, but uh, once you've shared that with people, it's the group's game. And they're refereeing it as much as you are. And then they said, divide into four circles, and then we had to be our own referee. <laughs> There's no way we're going to get it. Who's handy? Oh, you want us to all go under? No, that won't work. That won't work. Well, we're going to just twist her around. Yeah. we got to make a circle. Yeah. If I went through there, yeah. then that would put me over there, and that'd be right, wouldn't it? No. This way. Okay. Ah, oh, wonderful. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we did it. <laughs> What is the name of it? Dots. <laughs> Everybody's idea was worth something, you know, I mean, you yeah. try anything. No one person emerged as the person who dominated what happened there. Everybody made <laughs> suggestions, everybody had to try it out. Survival of the world. It doesn't matter what kind of a person you are to be a referee. You can be any age, or it doesn't matter what sex you are, you are be a strong person. What you need to do to be a referee is be willing to share what it is that you want to do with everyone. To say, this is my idea. So that people can go, yeah, that's the idea. Sure, let's try that. The little kid who started Snake in the Grass was a referee. He said, I've got a game I want to play. It's called Snake in the Grass. And the six-year-old got us all on our knees, crawling around trying to tag people that we were snakes. Everybody has to touch the person that's running down. He's a snake. The baby and daddy steps the person that's running down. The snake in the grass. The baby is the grass. And the snake has to touch the child. 
talk about the lake or something. The important thing about the game is the idea that people can go into and out of an activity on their own decision. We try and keep boundaries minimal. Having more than one activity going on at the same time reinforces that. You don't want to drag people into a game that don't want to play. But it never hurts to say, by the way, anybody who wants to join us can. We'd love to have you come play with us. When you're playing with adults, they are so ordered that what you've got to do is get a little bit more chaotic. When you're playing with kids, it's so chaotic. It's just the other way around. You have to add a little order to their chaos. It looked like a big old globe, but it's bigger and it's funner. When you get on it, if you fall, you ain't gonna hurt yourself because you're laughing so much. You can sit on top of the world. And it looked like you're sitting on different parts of the world. One time you're sitting on the United States, the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. And then you're going to be rolling off in a minute. What makes a good referee is somebody who's willing to try a game that might not work. If you're willing to say, I have just led a game that doesn't work, you haven't lost anything. What you have gained is the trust of the people you're playing with. Being a new games leader, be willing to make a fool of yourself. Be willing to take a risk and be very open with people, very honest about what you're doing as a leader, and invite them to be a leader too. You have a lot to give to people, and that's what a leader realizes when they realize that they can lead. They realize that I have something that people will benefit from if I stand up there and show it to them. touch with each other in small groups, a large New Games tournament can bring together a whole community. In New Games, there are no sides to take and nothing to believe in but yourself. So everyone can work together for the common goal, playing. We like to have free admission at New Games tournaments and have those parts of the community that have the financial resources to help us make that possible. begin when you start filling up the earth ball at the gas station. The first people who come to the tournament are those who follow you from there back to the playing field. When we have a tournament, we always notify the police and the fire department, hospitals in the area, and just let them know what's happening. However, in the years we've been doing new games and having played with almost 100,000 people, we've never once had to have police help us in controlling a tournament. Those be your basic security force in any new games tournament are your referees who are there. We invite community groups to come and share their foods with us as well. Some of our tournaments, we have Chinese and Mexican food, ham hocks, hot dogs. It helps to really reflect the cultural diversity of our communities. The National Guard brought us a water tank and a man to fill it up for us all day long. The guy who brought the water tank on the first day came back as a referee on the second day. Cardboard tubes make great trumpets. But one part of the community might find useless might be the start for a whole new game. The department store delivered their old refrigerator boxes to our site. We called up the YMCA and we said, listen, we're having this large public event. We got a proclamation from the mayor. We'd really love to have you come and bring your kids out, bring your staff to come out and play with us. By the way, do you have a trampoline? 
changing the scale of the game can make that game new and intriguing. Giant pickup sticks. Group murals. Group weaving. We just took a kite design from a kite book and multiplied it by 10 and it worked. That's really amazing because it's like having a, a two or three hundred pound fish on the end of a line. And it just pulls. One year we started setting up a game we call hay toss, where somebody tosses a bag of hay over an elevated bar that continues to be raised. The person breaking up the bales of hay for stuffing sacks called over a group of kids to help him. They said, what's the name of the game? And he said, it's hay toss. They hadn't heard of hay toss, and they made up their own rules. By the end of the day, hay toss, version two, covered an area larger than a baseball diamond. We like to play tug of war with Le Mans or running start. At one tournament, we stretched the rope across the creek and got everyone on their mark, then called out to switch sides. If you don't have a creek, you can always improvise. I'm gonna ask this question again. <laughs> Are you ready for a rest? Yes! yes! Well, in that case, let's go. <laughs> you know, when people get tired, have an activity that tired people can do. So that the answer to being tired is not to stop playing. When you get a face mask on, first your face gets stiff, and then they pull the skin off. We encourage people to take responsibility for themselves as they participate. And in a tournament, we ask them to take responsibility for their environment. So that once we stop playing, we can leave within an hour, and it looks like we've never been there. Probably one of the reasons why um, I get so excited about this kind of thing is that uh, there is that option to create, the, particularly for the growing child, and for those of us in whom the child is still alive and not stopped growing and not stopped investigating. When you're playing, the blood is surging through your body and there's a burst of energy. The first time I experienced that, I thought, what is going on? And it just came just like Vesuvius. You know, here I am, little old lady, tearing across the air. Wow, I could have gotten over anything. Just enjoying it. I don't like to compete. To make your body go as far as your body can go. That's where the competition comes out in me. No matter which side you're on, you really give your all. And then the next minute, you're on the other team. It doesn't make any difference that you swap sides. And it'll be impossible to keep score. No way. No way at the end of the day can you say, I lost seven and won ten. <laughs> All the people on the other team look like real people. They're not wearing uniforms or anything, and they're smiling at you. You want them to win just as much as you want you to win. They don't say, oh, you are too big, or too small, or anything, you know. It just doesn't matter. I, I haven't uh, developed enough courage to, to approach people, but today I feel like I can smile at any one of them and say hi. <laughs> First time that you're with a group, you don't know the people, the physical touching really does communicate something. It goes beyond talking. This young lady with crutches and leg braces never was able to do games using her legs, and all of a sudden, after 18 years, she was. And the thing that New Games does is it puts you into that state of joy and happiness. It alleviates that whole state of uh, being sick. Hey, if I look at my life situation as a game, then maybe I might be able to compromise a little bit easier if I've experienced the joy of winning together rather than by myself. Here I am, all of me, 
in one place at one time doing one thing that's being shared. And we developed this, like this allness of all of us together, besides me experiencing all of me. <laughs> I really like that. <laughs> And <laughs> we laugh together. <laughs> You're doing it on faith. Believe me, it works. We've tried it in so many different situations of young people, old people, indoors, outdoors. We've done it in the deserts, we've done it in the snow. It always works. And each time it's different. Just be willing to let it happen. <laughs> Anything you can think of can be new games. New games are not what you're playing, but how you're playing. Actually, the only really new games are the ones that you haven't invented yet. And the only rule you need to remember is to play hard, and to play fair, so that no one gets hurt. New games for you may be anything from pie in the sky to pie in the face. Now it's up to you to take the ball and run with it. Whoa!